Juan Philip Sullivan here. I'll be uploading uh, kind of a transfer piece on LSU's newest transfers. Um, announced today, Tremont Shorts, offensive lineman out of Eastern Tennessee State. Of course, we had linebacker West Weeks the other day. Jeremy Bramblett, punter, 2019's number one punter, coming uh, to follow uh, Brian Kelly from Notre Dame. And then uh, Mecky Wingo. Am I pronouncing it correct? That guy? I think it's Mecky. Mecky Wingo. Mecky Wingo is a first team all SEC freshman. 27 tackles, one interception return for a 40 yard touchdown. 40 yards return for a touchdown. Um, one sack, two tackles for loss, two quarterback hurries. You know, he he's capable of playing defensive tackle or defensive end. I see that he's been put out there as a DE. I just want you all to know he, he can play both. He's a DT or DE. I've confirmed that with Mickey myself. Um, he's excited to be here. He's excited to play for LSU. And this is the thing. This is the thing I, I just want to say, and this is going to be my message throughout all of the transfer portal. It's not, you know, Brian Kelly's going out there grabbing starter after starter after starter. This guy is going to be our next All-American. This guy is going to be the replacement of Stingley. This guy is going to be the replacement of, of fill-in-the-blank. This guy is going to be Eli Ricks' direct replacement. Like, we're not even going to need that type of shit, okay? We don't need Eli Ricks' direct placement. We don't need Derek Stingley Jr.'s direct placement. This is an entire different team that doesn't we don't need to fill those exact holes where we got to have a Sting Lee Jr. We got to have an Eli Ricks. Maybe we can do something else a little bit better to make to fill up for that hole, fill up, you know, make up for that loss. And I think what you're going to see is LSU are going to grab a bunch of guys in the portal who can make the roster more competitive. It's about inter squad competition. It's about iron sharpening iron. And, you know, Coach O liked to talk about it a lot, liked to say that line a lot, but did we ever really see it except for 2018, 2019? No, we didn't. We really did not see the iron sharpening the iron. LSU lost so many guys in that 2020 offseason, right before the season through the transfer portal, through the opt-outs, through, the, through even some suspensions. That greatly, greatly hurt our team because basically it entitled a lot, it entitled that next wave. The next wave at LSU didn't have to earn it from the wave before them, which is a bunch of guys who, who, who won national championships and weren't just, you know, hey, I've got a national championship on my finger, I was there on the sidelines. These were the guys who decided the national championship for LSU. They went out there and won that national championship alongside Joe Burrow. And, you know, they did not have the chance, except for in a few circumstances, when, you know, guys knew they were leaving, like Clyde Edwards-Alaire, for example, he knew he was going. Once that year was hot, you know, receivers like Jamar Chase, well, sorry, actually take off Jamar Chase, but Justin Jefferson, um, you know, other than that, that crew did not know that they were directly going. And so there was a lot of guys who Coach O basically had to say, you know, now you're my starter. It, you know, I'm going to fill you up with a bunch of confidence, whether it's false confidence, false bravado or, or, or not. Here it comes. And uh, please, you got to back me up. You got to back me up. And that's the way Coach O would operate is, you know, throw it at the wall. If it sticks, great. If it doesn't, shit. Well... We'll see if, the, if something else works until we run out of ideas. That's kind of what we saw there when um, 
the 2020 starters took over on, especially on defense and offensive line is, you know, these are guys who, who were expected to just become the, that, that 2019, uh, br- that bridged from 2019 into the future, just, just almost by osmosis, not having to earn it, not having to compete for it, you know, and the 2019 offseason was a world away after those pandemic delays. It made those kids feel like they haven't played football in a year. It was very bizarre. Um, and, it, you know, that's the thing that I'm very excited about with these transfers. Is I feel like, okay, the last wave didn't really earn it. There's some guys like Kayshawn Booty, who the second Jamar Chase left, he was like, well, this is my job, you know, and like, he's a self-starter. Not everyone is like that, or like B.J. Ojolari, you know, guys who are just self-starting greats. Uh, Not everyone's got those skill sets, especially mentally. And, uh, you know, to sharpen that and to shape that, a lot of players, even some of the greatest of the greats, need that class above them, that veteran leadership to sh- not only show them the way, but sometimes take them by the hand and kick them up the ass. You know? That's sometimes ex- just exactly, specifically what is needed for growth. Especially in the game of football. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. Offensive side, of, you know, offensive line. The trenches. But that's what I find to be the most intriguing part of these transfers for LSU. I feel like this is going to add up to a more fiery and competitive roster top to bottom. You're going to have guys who maybe thought they had the starting role all sewn up, and now they're ooh, one eye over their shoulder, and they're, they're going to be looking for a while. And um, that's going to keep them playing at their best, at their optimum. I see that happening throughout the roster here. You know, even someone like Peyton Todd, he probably thought, hey, this is my year. I'm going to start. We're all good here. I'm going to start at the, at the pun- and be the punter for LSU. And now suddenly here comes Jeremy Bramblett. And he's got Kelly ties, too. You know, there's... It might not be everyone's cup of tea seeing Kelly's and his guys come in and, and kind of take over. But I think it's going to be this, well, prove it or lose it type of type of uh, thing here with our players. You know, prove it or you're going to lose it to the new guy, to that new transfer, because he's hungrier. You know, there, <laughs> Joe Fouché, you know, maybe he takes over as the starting safety opposite Jay Ward, Jay Ward over a guy like Major Burns, you know, it's, it's going to be very interesting this off season. And I think the moves Brian Kelly has made all in all are just going to make LSU a more competitive team, top to bottom, make us obviously a more deeper team. And I'm not just meaning in bodies, but this is going to make our team better. Like if you, if you don't think that right now, you're a fool. And looking at the offensive line, you've got so much inexperience and youth coming in, even, you know, inexperience and youth that are still there, you know, even with the great guys, Marlon Martinez, Marcus Doomerville, you know, Xavier Hill, Cardell Thomas, you still need to shape those guys in the right direction here. And Traymon Shorts, Miles Frazier. You know, whether they play a down or not, their veteran leadership, their presence as as guys who've been there and done that at whatever type of level you want to say, it doesn't matter. They've been there and done that, and that's going to be a great equalizer, a great guider, guidance for these uh, for these uh, young guys. Guider. <laughs> Did I just invent a word there? <laughs> and, um, yeah, I really believe that these transfers are just going to make LSU sh- iron that sharpens the iron. And I think this is going to be what we thought we were going to see 
the last off season and the last off season before that. <laughs> I think now we're going to see a team play LSU football how it's meant to be played. And that's, you know, hey, we're going to be four or five deep at every position. May the best man win. And, you know, we've just got a bunch of killers on this team. And I just cannot wait for spring practice to start. Just cannot wait.